welcome to my behind the scenes uh, diary from my trip to Africa. This is day one. We are in Amsterdam right now, just waiting for the flight to Kenya to take off. Uh, so far, uneventful. The big event of day one was flying from Portland to Amsterdam, which is a nice 10 hour flight, but uh, not a lot of very exciting things going on there. <coughs> So, thoughts on Amsterdam? Looks a lot like Portland. I mean, an airport is an airport. They sell the same stuff, eat the same stuff. It's very similar. So now, another 10 hour flight to Nairobi, and then we'll be on the ground there, and we can start filming tomorrow. And that's the plan. So, here we are. Yeah, an airport and another plane. Welcome to day two of our Africa adventure. And at this point in time, we are in Africa. Let me say that again. We are in Africa, which again, for someone that's never left the continental United States prior to yesterday, we're in Africa. This is bizarre for world for me. So holy moly. But anyway, a few interesting highlights from today. Uh, today was all about travel, day two of travel. Uh, it was all about getting from Amsterdam down here to uh, Nairobi. Um, now, I'm not complaining. I'm just making an observation. Uh, on the first flight, I had an exit row, so I had all the room in the world. Not so this flight. And whoever says the international flights have more leg room are crazy because this was the smallest cabin space I'd ever been in. I was in the middle seat, I was crammed in between two large people, and I could not move my legs. And this is a 10 hour flight. Yeah, fun. Uh, but I made the most of it. I walked around a lot um, as much as they would let me. I think I drove the stewardess nuts, but I'm stalling before I head back to my seat. I got here and that is awesome. So, a few things that were really, another thing that's really interesting to me was simply flying over the Sahara Desert. That's when I think it became real to me that suddenly I was on the opposite end of the planet and I was in Africa flying over the Sahara Desert at sunset. Awesome really cool. So we are here now. We are ready to go. Now is the challenge. Now I've got to convince my body that it's after midnight. It's 1215 in the morning. Uh, my brain says it's 1215 p.m. in Oregon time and I've got to now shut it down and say okay sleep for six hours before we have to go again which we'll see how that goes. And we've got to get everything charged and ready to go tomorrow because we'll be traveling out to the Mara and starting this whole crazy production. So that's what's going on. Right now we're at the Boma Hotel. This is kind of our quick refuge before we start camping for the next week. Uh, we will also be here next Monday night in between Kenya and Uganda so that we can reset, do laundry, just kind of chill before we get really rugged. So yeah, it's, this, this place is awesome. It looks fantastic. Granted, I'll be here for six hours, but I'm in Africa, which is crazy. Hey everybody, welcome to day three. I've got to talk a little bit quieter. We are now out at the, the, the camp that we'll be using for our location for the next four or five days. Uh, we're in kind of tent-like shelters, and there's other people around me, so I can't really speak at full volume without interrupting others who are probably trying to sleep right now, but that's okay. What a crazy, crazy day. So here's just a little bit of what uh, has happened in day three. First of all, we got up at, uh, or we left Nairobi at 8 o'clock this morning. Now, what I didn't realize uh, yesterday was that to go from Nairobi out to uh, the camp that we're staying at, was not a couple of hours. It was six hours of driving, which is a long time when you've been on a plane for the last two days. And 
the last 90 minutes of that was the bumpiest roads I have ever been on. I mean, just crazy. And we're driving like 70 miles an hour down these things. It was, we were, yeah, fun stuff. Actually, it was a lot of fun. Got to take some pictures of some dead animals, which I was not expecting. So anyone who knows how I deal with dead things will probably find that rather humorous, but you gotta do what you gotta do for the job. And then finally ended up here. <laughs> Where we checked in, got our sparings, and thought we were just going to hang out, but no. We immediately left for a evening safari, kind of checking out the land that they have here. Amazing, amazing stuff. We're, we're seeing zebras, we're seeing wildebeests, we're seeing giraffes, we're seeing uh, elephants. Just all out roaming freely, which was really, really cool. Uh, we're sitting here looking at one thing and all of a sudden a giraffe just peeks his head up over the, uh, the, the bushes like, hey, what you guys are doing? Very, very cool stuff. So kind of a lot of exploring today, uh, doing some preliminary filming. We'll probably start some of the key stuff tomorrow. We are finally here. Production is ready to go. Tonight I did the first batch of star photography, which I'm, I'm pleased with. And what a fabulous day. It is hot. It is sweaty. You can see I've got the, the mosquito netting up so I don't get malaria. And fingers crossed that everything goes according to plan. <sighs> day four. Okay, today was a really busy day. Um, we had a lot of filming to do. We were officially starting production this morning. And so we're better to start filming than heading over to some of the schools. And so that's what we did uh, for pretty much the whole half of the day was just filming in one of the, the local schools. Uh, always fun interacting with the kids here. Um, from the moments that, that, that we got here, there's always seems to be little kids around. Yesterday we were getting gas. One of them just came out of this little hut next to the gas station and just stood right next to my window and just looked up at me and just smiled, drank his water, and just stared me down. It's just totally cute. But working with the kids today, just a lot of fun, very rewarding. One of my favorite moments was um, I was down, I was sitting next to a fence kind of propping myself up and shooting a group of kids who were eating their, their porridge that they just got for lunch. And uh, as I'm sitting there filming them, one of the kids came over behind me kind of scooching in because like I said, there's a the fence there blocking the way. And he had to see what I was seeing. Can you see? <laughs> And so he kind of bent over in front of my, my big you know screen that I've got on my camera and started looking. And then once the other kids saw that he was looking, they had to come and pretty much I had this big mob of kids all crammed in around me with their heads in, trying to see what exactly it was that I was filming. Hi. 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 Because if everybody comes up, they're like, <laughs> everybody likes their fist bumps. It's just they're a fun bunch. I had a, a little assistant. Uh, he followed me around. He was just right on my my my, my leg the whole time, just <laughs> watching everything I did. Wouldn't leave. Just never said a word. But cool little kid. I think he sensed I must have a kid close to his same age. So again, very rewarding there. Um, Filming in the villages this afternoon, uh, fun seeing some of the, the local uh, the people, some of the locales, uh, just constantly amazing me the conditions, but at the same time how friendly all the people are and how open they are and it's just, it's a really fun, cool community, regardless of how much uh, money is, is in there. Um, actually tried goat, ate goat for lunch that was interesting
I was feeling a little under the weather tonight, you know, trying to adjust to this whole new African diet, uh, which has been interesting for me. So I was tired, I was getting ready to come back to, to go to bed early, and then I looked up at the skies and gotta grab a camera, go take some pictures because I just can't. So, that said, I gotta get ready for another busy day tomorrow. You can see I've got a bed full of gear to sort and try to get ready, batteries charged, and then go hit my little nest. Make sure I don't get bitten by any mosquitoes. So. Day five. It's safari time. Gotta get some footage of some animals to be able to tell the story, so time to go see them. Okay, so where are we now? <laughs> Here, I'll let you tell me. Where are we right now? We are in the Masai Mara. We are using the Masai bathroom. <laughs> using the Masai bathroom? Yeah, Masai toilet. It's a bush. <laughs> this is our bathroom break, right? In the middle of... Uh, of uh, the middle of the jungle. Middle of the jungle, yeah. Yeah, we are just relating with lions and wildebeest. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Well, what's your favorite thing to show people out here? I would like uh, my favorite thing to show them is about the leopards, lions, and the elephants. Mostly yeah. the elephants because they are mostly available. They are visible. They're very fun to see too. Yeah. yeah. Loving it. Thanks for showing us around. Oh, thanks to meet you. This is our, our guide. Now, what's your name? Collins. <laughs> oh, yeah, Collins. That's yeah. right. That's right. So, well, thank you for showing us around. You're most welcome. <laughs> Okay, so what's left left on your list for things you want to see here in Kenya? The cheetah. Okay. And a black rhino. Or any rhino. Any rhino. But a black one would be special. <laughs> okay. How about you? I'm still hoping for the hippos and uh, I don't know. I'm not too picky. <laughs> <laughs> but I would like to get a little bit up close and personal with the uh, the giraffes like the other night. That was pretty cool. That was cool. I was uh, very surprised that we could drive up to uh, five feet away from the lions and they didn't eat my kid. Now it's time to get really serious and try to cram a lot into the next two days to get this whole short film done for the Maasai people. So a couple things were going to happen today. First of all, we needed to head over to the Conservancy's main center uh, and do some interviews over there. So we headed over, talked to a whole bunch of different people. One of our main interviews for the day was Nelson, who's this whole community has been his idea and his doing. So this is a key interview for us as far as content for the, for the video. We've got him and a bunch of other people interviewed during the morning. It was beastly hot. So a lot of us did, did whatever we needed to do to try to uh, beat the heat. I ended up finding uh, a t-shirt that I could just drape over my head so that I could see my monitor and continue to watch what's going on with the shoot. But tried to stay as cool as possible and keep my monitors and such out of the heat. It was definitely an interesting day. Um, Coming back at lunchtime after we did all of these interviews, we had just expected to do a quick trip back. Um, ended up having a little bit of Maasai traffic. Uh, as we were coming back, we ran into a tower, not a herd, as we've learned, a tower of over 60 giraffes, which were all in a, you know, an area. I had to maneuver around them to, to be able to get out, but uh, crazy seeing that many giraffe all in one small place. Uh, beautiful, beautiful creatures, but <laughs> it's, you just never know what you're going to find around here. After lunch, we uh, it was time to head out to the community. Now we were visiting uh, the, one of the, the Maasai villages, and it was fun being welcomed in by the community. They did a huge welcome dance for us. 
um, brought us in, let us tour their homes, which uh, they're very, very small, but very, very well built and just kind of fascinating to see a, a culture that still lives like this in, in this day and age. And it's, it's been very fun. They um, kind of showed us how things work, let us shop through different things that they, that they sell. So all very, very uh, interesting, enlightening afternoon spent with them in their village. And then we went out to do a few more interviews with some of the military guys. Now they're not really military, but uh, they, they protect the conservancy like with military methods, they're protecting poachers. So we watched some of the drills that they're doing and then they took us on a walking tour of, of some of the conservancy. And these guys are really proud of their land. So we walked a lot. <laughs> and I, it, it's, it's fun to see the pride that they have as far as all the things that they've got going on and just how much they love this space that they've put together where people and, and this wildlife can all kind of coexist uh, very fascinating to see. Finally got back in our vehicle, headed back towards camp. Of course, another big group of giraffes <laughs> had to interfere. exhausting day we ended up getting back fairly late um, enough time to wolf down some dinner and then crash out but or get ready to crash out and that was today so it's we're getting a lot of great footage it's very crazy seeing the things we're seeing but we I expect to have a, a really interesting video by the end of it and as you can see I'm so tired I can barely even think straight so Time to sleep so we can go that hard again tomorrow. So an important part of the story that we're trying to tell has to do with land and the borders here. And one of the things we really need to do is get some awesome vista shots that really show off the lay of the land so we can establish where everything is at. Best place to do that is on top of the mountain right back there, which means we've got to hike to the top in order to get the shots. of fun vistas to see very very steep heading up that crazy mountain uh definitely a workout i'm going to sleep tired tonight but um just fantastic views well worth the effort of getting up there uh and awesome guides too those guys just rock it um tonight was or this afternoon we had rain <laughs> Rain. And rain and then more rain. So we'll kind of uh, messed up our afternoon schedule a little bit because, I mean, we're not talking organ rain, we're talking torrential downpours, which kind of bad for us in our production schedule. Which kind of bad for us in our production schedule fantastic for the people in the land here because they've been in drought conditions and they need every drop that they can get for you know as long as possible so even though we're shut down we can reschedule those interviews for tomorrow morning before we head out not a worry there uh, we got that all covered so the question is so since this is our last night here in with the Maasai people mm -hmm. what are you going to miss most mm. I love, I, I really love all the people that we met and I'll miss the place and it's been really fun to just work and do what I do right here and not be on my computer somewhere else far away. So just to actually be with the people that I work with and for, I'll miss that a lot. That's okay. really good. Yeah. The elephants are here. And with that, we have elephants <laughs> in camp. Gotta go check yeah. that out. One little fun fact, as we're getting ready for dinner, as you just heard, 
We had elephants, a group of elephants, come through the camp tonight, uh, just before dinner. Crazy stuff, but uh, Shelly mentioned the fact yesterday she really wanted to see one more elephant before she left Kenya. And boy, someone must be listening because a whole big group of them came through and really kind of a cool treat. Dinner tonight, we had what pretty much was going to be a wrap party. We wanted all the people that have helped us put together this video in uh, the, the lodge here and, and having a nice dinner together and celebrating what we've accomplished and hopefully what we can accomplish to help the, spread this amazing message with the video that we've been producing. I've been all over the world, but one thing that I've learned is that home is in the people that you love. So I wanted to tell all of you, thank you for being my home. Very happy. Young boy, very happy. <laughs> thank you to everyone. Thank you for this particular or uh, special moment that we yeah. are together. Yeah. Right? Samburu Muri have a safe journey. <laughs> Please don't forget us. We are not going also to forget you guys. Yeah. Asha Oleng. Asha um, it kind of turned into a dance party, was not expecting that, but... to have a good time and they know that they value their culture and it's really fun to see so another fun day this is our last night here which is kind of weird we've kind of gotten used to this place and it's it's fantastic but time to move on to new adventures good morning day eight now Got just a couple more uh, interviews to do this morning, grab a little bit of breakfast, and then we are out of here, back to Nairobi. Bumped the hat a little bit up. His eyes are too dark. What was hold the last one? We are back in Nairobi. We <coughs> finished up this morning with just a couple interviews. Said goodbye to that crew, which was sad for us. They, they've We've become really bonded with them. They're like family. They're just such good people out there. Really hard to, to see them go, but it is time to move on. So we needed to leave and do the six hour drive back to uh, Nairobi, which is just a long drive. To make it interesting, we did kind of break down in Narok. All those bumpy roads take a toll. Um, Checked our gas can or gas tank as we were taking a rest stop. Noticed it was completely gushing gas outside of the vehicle, which is never a good thing. So we, we took a quick trip into Narok and uh, had them take a look at it, fix the fuel line, and so that delayed us a little bit. But no problem, we still got back to Nairobi. Had a little bit of time late this afternoon for a quick rest. Got to shave finally. And. Uh, kind of clean up a little bit, charge a bunch of batteries, and get ready to go for the next week. Tonight's dinner, interesting, interesting stuff. We ended up over at a restaurant called The Carnivore. Now, The Carnivore is world famous for its amount of meat and the exotic meats that it serves. So what you do is you go in and you sit down, it's an all-you-can-eat restaurant, uh, there's a little flag on the table, and when that flag is up, they will bring you meat, and they will bring you meat and meat, and just platefuls and platefuls and platefuls. Do you want barbecue ribs? Here you go. Do you want camel? Okay, here you go. Do you want crocodile? Do you want bull balls? Pretty much everything we encountered, we ate. Um, even though it, some of it was not all that great. Good stuff, crocodile, as far as the exotic stuff goes, that was fantastic. Not so great stuff, bull balls are not my thing. Uh, I at least tried it, but, <laughs> you know, you gotta do it once, and that was fine for us. So, fantastic meal tonight. Uh, again, really sad to say goodbye to Nelson and his wife and son who joined us for dinner tonight. Uh, as they will not, I mean, they're there from Nairobi and 
you, so they will not be continuing with us. Also, I had to say goodbyes to uh, Matt, who's been my sound guy for the last week, did an awesome job and really worked hard for the project, and uh, his son Maddox, who's also been with us, they're heading back to the States so that uh, Shelly and I can continue on into Uganda. So, another big travel day tomorrow. We'll see how it goes and see what kind of conditions we're going to be in when we get to Uganda tomorrow. And with that, I gotta get to sleep. We got a busy day tomorrow. See you, and thanks for watching the behind the scenes from our little trip to Kenya and the amazing experience we've had. My name is Francis Olemonga. My name is Collins Olereya. From Olderpoi Marakam. We are from Olderpoi Marakam. National Life Conservancy. We are yeah. very happy, happy to host you guys you. here at Olderpoi Marakam. Uh, we hope that you come back again. That's our prayer, and we are going to miss you so much. We cannot express that, but uh, we hope that you come back again. You are mostly welcome, again and again. This is your second home now. Away yeah. from your home. Away from US. <laughs> yeah, and say hi to US people whenever you go back. And Trump as well. Karibu sana. Karibu sana. Thank you. Asheoling. Asheoling.